Hello everyone and welcome to Who Wants to Be a Ruby Engineer, the only Ruby game show, at least here at RubyConf Mini. I am your host, Drew Bragg. Look, that's my face. Sorry. Um, I, contrary to popular belief, I am from Philadelphia, not Oklahoma. I am also a staff engineer at a company called Within3 and the host of a podcast called Code and the Coding Coders Who Code It. Uh, I can be found on the internet most places at DR Bragg. My last name has two G's. Speaking of my company within three, we're hiring. So if you're a Ruby and Rails engineer who is looking for an exciting role, doing some really cool, interesting, and occasionally complex work, please come see me or any of the other awesome within three engineers who made it out. Lindsay Kelly gave an awesome talk on the first day. Jordan, Dan, Kevin, and Lin another Lindsay are all also here. Uh, and we would love to talk to you about how awesome it is to work at within three. So before we get started with all the fun, a little disclaimer. Most of the Ruby you're about to see is valid syntax. It'll run. I don't recommend it. Um, you can use it to confuse and befuddle your coworkers. That's fun. Just not in production code. You can use it to get a better understanding of Ruby and how it works. Just not in the code you commit to your production app. So think very, think before you commit is what I'm getting at. I like keeping Ruby weird. I like keeping Ruby fun, but I also like keeping Ruby readable. So how is today gonna go? Here are my rules. I apologize if they are hard to read. That's the font size. Uh, so I have some wonderful contestants here in the front row. They're gonna come up one at a time, and they're gonna have about 20 seconds to guess the output of a small snippet of Ruby. I'm not a monster. They'll have multiple choices, A, B, C, or D. I did not have A, B, C, or D when I was trying to figure out what the heck was going on when I saw this code the first time. They will also have some powers they can use. They can pair program, which they can pick one of you to answer for them, or they can search Stack Overflow. Your Stack Overflow. We'll take a poll, see what you all think is going to be the answer. If a contestant gets it wrong, they'll sit down and we'll have the next contestant get up. No one should feel bad about getting them wrong. These are practically designed to get wrong. You should be actually happy when you get it wrong because it means you learned something. So when a contestant does get a question wrong, let's give them a round of applause because we all just learned something. But that being said, I do have some prizes and in the interest of competitive spirit of a game show, the better you do, you'll get the first crack at the prizes. Now. Those prizes are only possible because I have some sponsors. Uh, Joe Maslati and Rails Dev provided a bulk of these prizes. If you do not know Joe, he is a fantastic human being. He's doing a ton of work getting Ruby and Rails juniors specifically hired. Rails Devs is an open source reverse job board for Rails Devs. He's also helping a lot of people get their first open source commit to Rails Devs and then helping them find a job. Uh, if you, like I said, if you don't know Joe yet, please go out of your way to meet him, thank him for sponsoring and everything that he does um, in our community. Another sponsor I got was uh, the one and only Andrew Mason. I think most of you know who that is. He is on the Remote Ruby podcast. Uh, he does the podcast with Julie, Ruby for All, which is wonderful and fantastic for juniors. He also does a Ruby Radar newsletter with Colin Gilbert. And last but not least, the one and only Andy Kroll right back there. Everybody give Andy a round of applause. <laughs> not just for sponsoring this game show, but also for helping so much with putting this on. So I have a question. Who wants to be a Ruby engineer? Who's my first contestant? As soon as you're ready, you can introduce yourself, tell us where you're from, and how long you've been working with Ruby. Sure. Uh, my name is Aji. Um, I am from Chicago, work at ThoughtBot, and uh, I think I'm coming up on my third anniversary of uh, being a professional Ruby dev. That's because I started on Leap Day in 2016. <laughs> 
Awesome. So this first question won't count against you. If you get it wrong, you can still stay up. It's a warm-up question. Just so everybody in the audience, yourself included, the other contestants know how the game is going to work and look. So again, I'm sorry. This is the size of my syntax. I tried bumping it up, and it messed up all my slides, and I was panicking about talking in front of you all anyway, so I thought I would just leave it. So, Aji, you're going to take a look at this short snippet of Ruby, one double colon plus, and in parens we have a two. Do you think that this is going to return an A, or A, a three, not an A, a three, <laughs> all right. B, raise a no method error. C, return a 12, or D, give us a syntax error. Uh, I believe that that is going to return a three. And you, sir, are correct. So another thing that I will do after every question, because these are a little confusing, is I'll give you a short, hopefully adequate explanation. Uh, most of you probably are familiar with the double colon as a namespace resolution operator. We can go from modules into classes, things of that nature. But it can also be used to call instance methods. Since one is an instance of an integer, an integer has an instance method plus uh, it, that accepts an argument. What we just saw is equivalent to sending plus and two to one, or commonly one plus two. For the love of mats, <laughs> please use one plus two. Don't use this other stuff. Make your code readable. Okay. Do you, do you think you have, you, you have it down? I think I've All got right. it. So now we're going to start the real game. Let's go. All right, so our short snippet of Ruby, we have the string of F. We're going to ask it in predicate method. We have the range of A through Z. Are we going to get back A true, B false, C nil, or D raise a no method error? I, it feels like it could be a trick. Uh, I would never do that. Absolutely not. Um, let's, uh, how about we ask Stack Overflow? All right, Stack Overflow, what do you think? Show of hands, who thinks it's going to be A, true? It's a decent amount. B, false? No one. C, nil? One person. Or D, a no method error? 50-50 split between A and D. Yeah, yeah, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm going to go with no method error. And you, sir? are correct, and for those of you who answered A and are scratching your heads a little bit, this is a Ruby game show. In is actually provided by active support in Rails. It's not part of Ruby. I'm so sorry. Great work. Fantastic. I was going to say. I would have gotten that one wrong. It's true. Next question. We have an instance variable, this, set to the string of fun. And we're going to put double quotes. This is pound at this, double quotes. What do you think this is going to give us back? Are we going to get a syntax error? The string, this is fun, the literal string, this is pound at this, or a name error? I'm going to say it's C. So close. But no, actually, this, is, this works. I found this out because I made a typo and was very confused <laughs> as to how this was working. And it turns out that when you're interpolating instance, class, or global variables, that's our, those are variables that have the at, the double at, or the dollar sign, you can omit the curly braces completely and interpolation will work just fine with just the pound. Thank you very much for playing. And can we have our next contestant, please? All right. If you could introduce yourself, tell us where you're from, and how long you've been working with Ruby. Absolutely. Uh, so I'm Elise. Uh, I am living in Colorado, but I'm originally from Pennsylvania. Uh, and I've been doing Ruby since 2010, I think. Good long while. Yeah, so All right. a while. So Elise, are you ready to play Who Wants to Be a Ruby Engineer? Sure. Yes. No, I'm... <laughs> I hope so, because we're doing ready. it. I'm ready. 
<laughs> so we have a variable str is set to an empty string and we're gonna shovel in the integer 97 and then we're just going to print out str. Is this going to give us A, a type error, B, the string 97, C, the string A, or D, the integer 97? Uh, so, I think B. Okay. That's what I'm gonna go with. All yeah. right, we're going with B. And actually, it's C. Aww. It's I know, it's, it's, it's head scratching. <laughs> so, <laughs> I love how much everyone is talking, because you're all going, what? <laughs> you're lying to me, I'm not, I'm not. Actually, if you look up the shovel method on string, if you're shoveling in an integer, it doesn't treat it like an integer, it treats it like a code point, and we'll just convert it into the ASCII compatible character. 97 is A. Crazy, right? Like, it's, it's insane. That means I need my next contestant. All right. Same thing. Introduce yourself, where you're from, how long you've been doing Ruby. Uh, I'm Mina. I am from Chicago, and I've been doing Ruby four and a half years. Still early right. enough where that half matters. Okay. Great. So are you ready to play? No. Can we, can we do it anyway? We can do it. All right, cool, cool, cool. All right, so we have an array with the integers one, two, and three, and we're gonna multiply it by two. Is that going to give us A, an array with two, four, six, B, an array with one, two, three, one, two, three, C, an array of an arrays with one, two, three in each, or raise a syntax error? I don't think it's A, but I wanna pair with a friend. All right, who do you want to pair with? Joelle. <laughs> Cheating. Joelle, what do you think it is? You have a lot of confidence in me. Oh. I believe in you. <laughs> yeah, C. C? We're going with C? Oh boy, this is going to be a long, long day. It's actually B. Uh, so what happens with multiplication when it's an integer, it behaves like concatenating the argument copies of that number for rays. So if we had done it three, we'd have one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, instead of just two times. Thanks for teaching me that. No problem. <laughs> Round of applause. <laughs> Who is my next victim, I mean, contestant, sorry. Let's make it a little easier since we're ripping through contestants. We'll, we'll use the same method. So again, we have the array one, two, three, and again, we're gonna multiply. Oh, you're right, Th who said that? Thank you, please introduce yourself. I'm Caleb, I'm from the frozen wasteland of Vermont, and I've been programming in Ruby for one to two years, somewhere in there. Awesome. Thank you, and thank you to whoever reminded me to do the thing that I should know to do by now. So, once again, we have an array with the integers one, two, three. We're gonna multiply it by the string of a dash, or a minus, or whatever you call that symbol. So are we gonna get back A, an array with the strings one, minus two, minus three, minus, an array with the strings negative one, negative two, negative three, an array with negative one, two, three, or the string one, two, three. I would recommend Stack Overflow because it sounds like there's a lot of people talking about it. I think I'm gonna go with Stack Overflow. All right, audience participation time. Who thinks it's A? All right, there's a couple of people. B, slightly less people. C, not zero people, <laughs> or D. Whoa, there was a lot of people Ooh. who shot their hands. <laughs> yeah, you know, I was thinking D anyway, so I'm gonna go with D. All right, let's see. You're all right, it's D. So even though that is the same method call when the argument is a string instead of an integer, instead of concatting, it operates like a join. Just fun fact, in case you ever run into it, I pray you don't. 
Are you ready for your next question? Yes, I am. All right. Here we're defining a method how big. It's a predicate, so it's got the little question mark at the end. It's going to take an argument of a hash. We're going to call size on hash. So when we call that, as you see on the screen, what are we going to get back? Is it going to be A, zero, B, nil, C, an argument error, or D, a no method error? I'm going to go out on a limb and say no method error. Well, you were at least right that it would raise something. This is an Ooh. argument error, and before you yell at me and say, you can omit the parentheses when passing arguments, you'd be right. But in this case, because we're using curly braces, the interpreter's gonna think that that is a block. Don't groan, I didn't come up with this, blame Matt. I'm just telling you the stuff I've run into and trying to make it fun for y'all instead of beating your head against your desk like I had to. Thank you very much for playing. I'm gonna need another contestant. Come on up. Go ahead and introduce yourself. Hello. Where you're from and how long you've been working with Ruby? Uh, I'm Gary. I'm from Seattle, and this is, I think, about my second year. Okay, great. Well, thanks for coming on up. Round of applause for Gary. Sorry, Gary. I got a hard one for you. Oh gosh. Or at least I think it's hard. I don't, I don't know. Uh, so we have foo. The, the variable foo is going to be set to class.new. And then we're going to assign name1 to foo.name. And then we're going to assign the constant bar to foo. And name.2 is also going to be foo.name. When we put those names out, what are we going to get? Nil and bar. Foo and bar. Class and class. Or nil and nil. I'm going to go with Stack Overflow for this. I have no idea. <laughs> All right, Stack Overflow, what do we think? Is it A, nil and bar? There's a couple of people. B, foo and bar. Hard no. C, class and class. Okay, about the same amount as A. Or D, nil and nil. Okay, we've got a couple in there, too. Oh, gosh. <laughs> yeah. A, A, or C, right? Is that what we just came up with, A or C? Right, it's got to be one of the two. Yeah. I'm going to go with A. A, nil and bar? That is an excellent guess. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Stack Overflow. I would, I would have bombed that, so good job, everyone. So module name returns nil if the module or class is anonymous, but the moment we assign it to a constant, it takes on the name of that constant. So that's what's going on there and why we had nil and then bar. Ready for the next one? I guess so. All right. Remember, you can pair, just can't stack overflow search. Right. My only last option. Yeah. Here's a fun one for you. So we have a variable nums. It's an empty array. And we're going to go through each number in 1 through 10. We have if i double equals 3 and then a dot dot and i double equals 8. If that evaluates to true, we'll shovel i into nums, and then we'll put nums out when we're done. So, is this going to give us a, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10? See what I'm saying about the formatting and why I couldn't pump this up? But look how close that is. b, 3, and 8. c, 1, 2, 9, 10. Or d, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. You do still have your pair power. I will pair. All right. Anybody want to help Gary out, or do you have someone in mind? I'll go with you. Okay, you're saying D. D. Smart man. Whoa, okay. All right. So, if you are as confused as I was when I saw this, this, <laughs> I couldn't even Google this. I had to Google the term so that I could Google this. Uh, it's called a flip-flop operator. So there, the flip-flop is used inside of loops, conditionals inside of loops, when the first part of the conditional evaluates true until the second part of the conditional evaluates true, that conditional evaluates is true. I know there's good uses for this. I just don't know what they are. You can ask Chris Seaton or Brandon Weaver. They probably know. All right.
So you got that one. We're going to keep going. Are sure. you ready? No, You're out of powers. All, yeah. <laughs> I'm all by myself now. All right. <laughs> Let's see what you got. <laughs> this is such a fun one. I'm so sorry. <laughs> uh, we have an array with question mark A, question mark 1, question mark double quote, and question mark question mark. Right. Uh -huh. <laughs> is this going to raise a syntax error? Give us back the string of question mark A, question mark one, question mark, escaped, double quote, double question mark inside of a string, or the string of A, the string of one, the string of double quote, the string of question mark, I really should have made this shorter, or return their code points, 97, 49, 34, 63. Just in case anybody's wondering, those are the ASCII compatible code points of all of the things that we're seeing up there. Right. I was initially thinking B, but that seems too a little bit too straightforward. I'm gonna go with D. He's catching on. <laughs> <laughs> but unfortunately you're wrong. Oh, okay. Only kind of you get to stay up because so okay, so the answer is C if you were to pull up IRB right now and I assume you have a new version of Ruby. But if you for some odd unexplainable reason had Ruby one point eight or older, he would have been right. In Ruby mm. 1.8 and older, the question mark in a single character would have returned their code point, but now it just returns a single character string. I have no idea why. Ask Nick Schwatter, he knows all the things about Ruby archaeology. So you do get to stay, you don't get a point for that, but you do get to stay, because that was a little tricky question. Sounds good. All right. Moving right along. <laughs> So we have one through five, we're gonna map over it, and we're going to send it ampersand with a colon and a minus and an at. I don't know. Um, yeah, so, that's so are we gonna get back either A, one, two, three, four, five, all negative, negative one, two, three, four, five. Are we gonna get a no method error, a syntax error, or one, two, three, and four? I really should have downloaded the Jeopardy theme music. This would have made it so much better for me. I'm going to go with A. You do not sound very confident. Not at all. Okay. <laughs> well, guesses are good, and especially in this case, because you're right. I'm just getting lucky here. <laughs> nice work. So this is actually how the integer instance method for negatives work. This minus at will return the integer negated. That's all three ways you see on the screen are all negative five. They all are the same basic idea. Very Ready wild. for the next one. You're doing let's, great. Let's do it. This is, yeah. You should play the lottery after this. <laughs> All right, so here we have A is going to be equal to force, fault, force, what? False, or the English word or, mm -hmm. and then true. B is going to be equal to false, the pipe or, true. So what are A and B? True and true, false and false. Nil and true, or false and true? Hey, he doesn't have his power, shh. This is interesting. I know, right? Yeah, very much. Uh, I'm confused I, uh, for you. Something I know is that the, the English or in the pipe, they operate differently. I just don't remember why they're different. <laughs> that might be helpful here. No one does. Maybe Chris Seaton does, but I don't. <laughs> I'm going to go with A. You're going to go with A, true and true. Unfortunately, it's false and true. So or... You're right, they do operate different. It has a lower precedent than the pipe or, but it also has a lower precedent than the assignment operator, so we oh. don't actually evaluate it. So That's Gary, you did very well. Thank you very much for playing. Gonna need a new contestant though. Thank you. Thank you, Gary. A man that needs no introduction, but I'm gonna let him do it anyway. Well, hello, hello. 
My name is Brandon Weaver. I'm currently out of San Francisco. I've been programming Ruby professionally for about 12 years, but interestingly enough, about 20 years actually, because RPG Maker XP had this lovely little RGSS thing, which is Ruby Game Script System. So I got to use that way back when. All right. So he's going to get all the rest correct. Got it. You cool. have a high amount of confidence in me. I'm going to plant him the first question. Go for it, though. All right. Well, let's find out. We have A is going to equal three times a block with the string of Ruby in it. Uh, so is A going to return, or a, when return we three. print A, is it going to be Ruby three times in a string, the integer three, B. and enumerate? <laughs> Let me finish. Or nil. You're right. It's B. <laughs> So for those of you who aren't Brandon, would you like to explain this too, or should I do that? No, no, by all means. Okay, thank you. So integer times will return an enumerator if there's no block provided. But in this case, we did provide a block. The block just didn't do anything. So what's returned is that integer. It's a little tricky. You're all expecting the block to run, which it did. It just didn't do anything. Math is fun. Math is hard. <laughs> you know what else is hard? I hope this next question. <laughs> <laughs> so A is going to equal sleep oh, 1.5. You know that one. I Let me get to the end. <laughs> is it going to be A1, B nil, C2, or D every time we call A, the system will sleep for 1.5 seconds? You know, I want to say B, but I'm going to do something very controversial and say phone a friend to Sam. I hope to dear God that you know this, because I don't, and I'm going to hope I do. Yeah, I'm fairly sure it's B, but I have a feeling it's not, so do me in. It's not B. Oh. It's one. Or sometimes two. I don't know. Depends on your system. Turns out that sleep will actually return the amount of time it actually slept for rounded. Depending on what you actually have going on at the time in your system, it's either going to be a one or a two. Might have Fair to enough. run it a few times, but it's going to be one of those. You win. But it's not going to be nil. It's the only one it's not going to be. Nice work. I am impressed. Oh my God, I'm out of volunteers. Does anybody else want to come up here and try this? Oh my God, Andy Kroll, we're not going to not. You know the drill, introduce yeah, yourself. Yeah, hi, I'm Andy, nice to meet you. Uh, <laughs> I've been programming Ruby since 2007, which is like couple, three or four years, yeah, something like that. Years, yeah, yeah. You might know some Ruby. I'm like guy, twenty. Yeah. I'm like twenty-eight. All in right. case anyone's asking. <laughs> I feel so bad that this is your question because no, I feel like I need to give you a harder one. But uh, here we go. X is equal to X. What's X? Is it going to be a name error, a system stack error? This is what you get when your your stack trace is too deep. A nil or a no method error. I have a question for you. How is this going to help me put forms on websites? <laughs> Just answer the question. <laughs> you do have your power-ups, even though I, I, I think you don't. No, no, I, know. I really, I really okay. do. I've got, like, up into the back there getting these all wrong. Um, <laughs> audience, help me. Stack Overflow, what do you think? Is it going to raise a name error? OK. A system stack error. One, two, what? One and a half. We'll go with one and a half, people. See, nil. Whoa. Yeah, okay. A lot of people. Or a no method error. It's a couple of people. So it looks like C is the winner. That's good. That, that was my guess. Okay. C. So if you, you've agreed with my guess, so that's good. <laughs> well, so you're right. Thank you, audience. Great job, audience. So if we just call X on its own, we will get that name error. But if we assign it to itself, it's nil. So X on its own is a name error. X equaling X, X is now nil. Everyone following? Good, because I don't even know what I just said. Do you have any CSS questions? 
I don't. Because. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. All right, you ready for the next question? No, go. All right. I'm not even gonna. I'm not oh, even gonna on. read this. I'm just gonna let you stare at it. I wouldn't even know how to read that. Puts a bunch of question marks in a random colon. Are we gonna get a name error? I haven't seen that in a minute. Nil. A name error. Or the string question mark. That's the string question mark, isn't it? It's D. Are you sure? No. Okay. <laughs> you do still have another power. Oof, oof, what do you think? You can't ask him. He's the one that came up with this one. Oh, so <laughs> <laughs> sure, sure, sure. Andy. <laughs> Brandon, all in. It is D. That's what you're okay, yeah, cool. Yeah, you know. Good instincts. I know, I know. See, I know. In instincts are right on for this. I'm all right, so for those of you who are scratching your head, Think back a couple of yeah, questions. That's, that's what Remember, getting. question mark is the single string, Yeah. right? But all we did was eliminate white space to make this extra confusing. So with the white space, it, it sort of takes shape. And then if we get rid of the fancy syntax of the question mark, it makes a lot more sense. Kind of. Cool. You ready for the last question? The last question. The last the whole question. Yeah, this is the whole so thing. I've got, so I can just I go anyway at the end of this. Yeah. You can do whatever you want. All right. That's fair. <laughs> I, I want to read it to you, but... It's def foo v equals def foo brackets e a little star. I never know what to call Asterisk. What did you just call that? What? Brackety? <laughs> I don't know if you've met me, but I make words up. I'm, I'm, so, I'm sort of I'm Shakespearean in that way. <laughs> All right, wordsmith. <laughs> what do you think foo plus foo is going to be? Foo plus foo? Foo bar. Yeah, calling foo with a plus in between, foo bar, foo foo, bar bar, it's just fun to say, or give us a syntax error. Is this you, Foo? No. Oh. no, this was, oh, this was all, no, that's, mm -mm. that's <laughs> one of my favorites. Uh, Look at all the parentheses. I mean, if I, so if, if I wrote it, syntax error, but, <laughs> uh, foo foo? Foo foo. Based Close, on, based on but absolutely no, nothing. it's foo bar. So much like you can make your default parameters call a method, it turns out you can actually make your default for your parameters uh, define a method. It just happens after the first time the method is called. I absolutely knew that. I can't think of a reason to Why use any, it. Anyone but wouldn't. I don't know. All right, so that was it. Round of applause for all of the contestants. They did great. They actually got a couple right, which means they did far better than I would have, because oh my god. So do we all know, now all see the importance of readable Ruby? Does everyone's brains hurt as much as mine? Don't make your friends, colleagues, coworkers, brains hurt, write readable Ruby. So big thank you to Ufuk and Kevin for all of their help putting this together. Ufuk gave me some evil ideas, and Kevin Murphy helped me put together my CFP and kept me calm this whole time. Um, again, if you liked this kind of stuff, you can find me here. I will be happy to send you weird stuff I deal with. If you liked this weird stuff and you want to come work on some of it, the app at work is 13 years old. It was written on Rails 2.0 and Ruby 1.8 by people who were writing PHP and C Sharp. It's a lot of fun. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. This was a blast.